Hello dear friends, I am Dr. Govind Verma, gastroenterologist and hepatologist working at Pace Hospitals. Today I would like to talk about liver function test. Now this is the most commonest test which is being done and advised by an hepatologist or a liver specialist for a patient who comes to them with a liver problem. Now what are the tests which are covered under the liver function test? We call it as parameters for example. So the first is that serum bilirubin which is total bilirubin direct and indirect bilirubin, SGOT, SGPT, also called as AST, ALT, alkaline phosphatase, total protein, serum albumin, serum globulin and prothrombin So, this is a normal liver function test panel which is being done in most of the places. There are few tests which are done additionally and to be included in liver panel are gamma GT we call as gamma glutamyl transpeptidase and another is as I said before INR and prothrombin time. So this is the mm, list of uh, uh, parameter which is included under the heading of liver function test. Now why liver function tests are usually advised? This is the commonest question. Um, uh, we all we will have. So, basically liver function test helps you in knowing what is the condition of the liver, what is the uh, synthetic function of the liver, what is the liver damage which has uh, caused because of the various liver disorders. It also helps you in knowing the coagulation function of the liver. It also helps you in liver synthetic function. It also helps you in knowing the liver disease per se, different differential diagnosis of a liver disease. Now, how does this help a patient who has a liver disease based on the liver function test? How do we interpret it? So, before I go for interpretation, I would like to first uh, talk about basic of liver function test that all the liver function tests are usually to be done in a fasting state because in a patient who has uh, had food, the interpretation of alkaline phosphatase may change, even the SGPT may falsely get elevated. So, liver function tests to be done in a fasting state, this is one. Two, whenever we do liver function test, it is done with the help of blood test. So, this is a blood test with which we can come to know various functions of the liver. As I told in brief, the synthetic function coagulation function, liver function as a metabolic marker and liver damage or differential diagnosis of liver disease we can come to know by doing this liver function. This AST and LT basically is produced by the liver and it is an important marker of a liver disease. Now, you look at the two different marker AST, LT or HGOT, HGPT we call it as. HGOT is basically a liver function parameter which is elevated in the liver disorders but it is a non-specific marker. What I mean by non-specific marker is that it can get elevated in patients who have other disorders also like the patients who are suffering from muscle disorders, the patients who are suffering from the blood disorders in those conditions also the liver function marker called as SGOT can get elevated. Whereas if you look at SGPT also known as ALT, this marker is more liver specific and it is usually elevated in patients with liver and biliary disorders. Now if you look at the normal range for these two parameters, usually it is below 40. Even recent guidelines show SGPT more than 35 is ideal. So, it all depends upon male and female. Uh, so, the parameters, the normal range may vary, but you can say that a normal value is below 35 to 40. And bilirubin actually is a product of uh, RBC breakdown, where RBC once that gets break broken, then it gets converted into hemoglobin. So, out of hemoglobin, the heme fraction gets converted to biliverdine and this biliverdine then goes into the liver along with albumin and gets conjugated and form a conjugated bilirubin. So, this is basically a cycle of bilirubin production which happens in the liver because of dying or breakdown of a RBC after 120 days of natural life cycle of an RBC. So, after 120 days period, RBC naturally break down in your body 
releases hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is into two fraction heme and globin. Heme gets divided, uh, broken down into bilirubin, gets gets transported into the liver through the albumin and then in the liver that helps there the process of conjugation happens with the help of enzyme and we have a conjugated bilirubin or direct bilirubin. So, whenever we are seeing a liver function test we see two fractions one is a total bilirubin and the second fraction is direct and indirect fraction which actually combinedly gives you total bilirubin value. So, why it is important to know bilirubin because there are certain disorders where the indirect bilirubin gets elevated and there are certain disorders where direct bilirubin gets elevated. Now, direct bilirubin is water soluble, so it gets excreted through the urine. So, whenever you do a urine examination in a patient of jaundice, if you see a bilirubin in the urine, so that means that the conjugated bilirubin is more produced and it is getting it excreted through the urine. Indirect bilirubin never gets excreted through the urine because it is water insoluble. Usually, the causes of high indirect bilirubin are hemolysis because the conjugation takes place in the liver. So, after the after the liver or before the liver, whatever process happens is are the reasons for indirect bilirubin high. So, hemolysis is one of the commonest reason for indirect high bilirubin. Other reason is Gibbert uh, syndrome or uh, trigler niger syndrome. So, these are all genetic disorders where you have a high indirect bilirubin which is seen in patient with uh, hemolysis or a genetic disorder. These are common in one. Whereas, direct bilirubin can get elevated in the liver disorders, biliary disorders, it can also be elevated in hemolysis, uh, but then more common is indirect bilirubin in that. So, direct bilirubin causes are usually liver and biliary disorders and those are more commonly seen in patients also with hepatocellular dysfunction. It can be cirrhosis, it can be liver cancer, it can also be because of the drug induced, it can be because of overdose of the paracetamol. So, there are many causes uh, which can lead to hepatocellular damage, liver damage and can rise to bilirubin. So, by and large, we do not see patient any clinical signs if the bilirubin in the blood is less than 2.5 milligram per cent. So, the commonest question patients and relatives ask us is that, sir, my patient does not have a eyes yellow and still you are saying the patient has jaundice because if the patient has bilirubin less than 2.5 but more than 1.2 which is upper limit of normal, they still will be called as jaundice but having jaundice but then that will not be visible into eyes and you will not be able to see a clinical sign called as icterus. So, a clinically visible jaundice is when the bilirubin is more than 2.5. Alkaline phosphatase again it is produced by the uh, biliary cells and disorders of the biliary system can give rise to high alkaline phosphatase. Sometimes it is also seen that patients with hepatocellular disorders can also have a high alkphos or alkaline phosphatase. But there are many isoenzymes of alkaline phosphatase and these enzymes subtypes are not possible to be differentiated by doing the blood test. When do we do alkaline phosphatase? We do alkaline phosphatase when uh, we know that the patient has a obstruction somewhere into the flow of bile duct. So, any disorder like which causes the bile duct obstruction whether it is extrinsic or intrinsic it may be pancreatic cancer, it may be bile duct cancer, it may be bile duct stone, it may be any pathology which is periampillary cancer, it may be primary sclerosing cholangitis, it may have a liver metastasis causing bile duct obstruction. All these disorders can cause high alkaline phosphatase. There are other causes also where the alkaline phosphatase can get elevated because of hepatocellular cause which is liver dysfunction which can be drug induced, which can be autoimmune, which can be cirrhosis of, cirrhosis of liver, which can also be because of the paracetamol overtoxicity, which can be loss of blood supply, ischemic hepatitis, ischemic jaundice we call it as. So, all these conditions also can cause alkaline phosphatase ele elevation and there is a one more variety we call as mixed where the patient can have 
mixed pattern where the patient may have a hepatocellular damage and a bile duct obstruction. In that case, we can get a mixed pattern where alkaline phosphatase and HGOT, HGPT may also elevate. If the patient has a low albumin, then it means that the liver is not synthesizing the albumin and that gives an idea that patient's liver is failing. The most commonest cause of low albumin in a patient with liver disease is cirrhosis of liver. And other causes are there where their, their patient can have a loss of albumin through the gut we call it as protein losing enteropathy. There can be a nephrotic syndrome where the albumin can be uh, lost through the urine. So, there also we can have a low albumin. One of the commonest cause of low albumin can be a sepsis where you may have a sepsis induced capillary loss and ultimately it leads to low albumin. So, these are these are various causes where we can have a low albumin and it directly indirectly speaks of liver synthetic function. One of the again most important parameter under liver function test is prothrombin time. For the want of standardization, now we consider INR, International Normalized Ratio, as a, as a standardized way of uh, knowing the prothrombin time uh, test valuation. Since the prothrombin time value can change, normal values can change lab to lab, so INR is a more standardized way of knowing it. And again, it speaks of uh, synthetic function of the liver. In patients who have uh, obstruction of the biliary tract or the patients who have hepatocellular dysfunction or jaundice, the prothrombin time can get prolonged. Also, there are other causes for prothrombin time prolongation like vitamin K deficiency or patients on anticoagulants. They can also have a prolonged prothrombin time. What is the role for a gamma GT? Most commonly uh, done test once you get a high alkaline phosphatase. So, gamma GT also known as gamma glutamine uh, transpeptidase. This test is very important test. This is done a blood test again and this test helps you in differentiating the raised alkphos from the source of origin. As I mentioned that alkaline phosphatase can get elevated in patients with disorders of bone, in disorders of the placenta and disorders of the biliary and hepatocellular tree. So, whenever you have a high alkphos to differentiate the source of origin, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase can be done, GGT, which can get elevated in patients with liver disease. So, it is a specific marker. It gives you uh, very clear indication that the GGT is very high, alkaline phosphatase is high, then the source of uh, high alkaline phosphatase is because of the liver or biliary pathology and not because of bone. So, if you have a patient where you see uh, alkaline phosphatase high, but gamma GT is normal, then the source is from the bone, like Paget's disease or osteoblastoma, bony destruction, you can say. If you have a patient who is uh, pregnant and you see high alkaline phosphatase, again it can be elevated because of pregnancy where gamma GT may be normal. Gamma GT also helps you in knowing whether the patient is having recent alcohol abuse. So, all those patients who are alcoholic and developing liver damage may have a high, alk may have a high alkaline phosphatase with gamma GT and can also have isolated gamma GT elevation without alkaline phosphatase elevation. usually have a pattern of elevation, pattern of abnormalities for different enzymes and based on which as a hepatologist we try to interpret how exactly, what exactly is the reason underlying pathology that can be. So, for example, if I take uh, HGOT and HGPT or AST and ALT, the similar uh, uh, synonyms. So, if the HGOT is more than HGPT more than two times, then we consider alcohol as a cause for a elevation of the enzyme. So, in that situation, alcoholic liver disease is more likely to be the cause, whereas the reverse, if HGPT is more than HGOT, then we consider non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or simple fatty liver disease or 
वी कैन हैव ऑटो इम्यून लिवर डिसीज ड्रग इंड्यूस कॉजेस इसकीमिक कॉजेस एज अ पॉसिबिलिटी फॉर अ एबनॉर्मल लिवर फंक्शन टेस्ट यू कैन ऑल्सो सी द एलिवेशन ऑफ द एंजाइम्स ऑल्सो गिवज एन आइडिया अबाउट द पॉसिबल इटियालॉजीज फॉर अ लिवर डिसफंक्शन सो इफ आई गेट अ पेशेंट हु हैज अ एच सी पी टी एंड एच जी ओ टी एलिवेटेड अराउंड फोर टू फाइव टाइम्स आई विल कंसिडर नॉन अल्कोहलिक स्टेटो हेपेटाइटिस फैटी लिवर डिसीज ऑटो इम्यून लिवर डिसीज समाइम्स सिरोसिस कैन बी अ पॉसिबिलिटी Uh, as a cause for the uh, liver disease you can also get elevated sgbt sgot in thyroid disorders lipid profile abnormalities dyslipidemia all these disorders can give an elevation around 4 to 6 times on, on an average uh, from the baseline but whereas if you get a sgbt and sgot more than 1000 then there are only few conditions where you can have one of them is uh, drug induced Uh, liver damage which can be acetaminophen or many other drugs which can cause a sudden liver damage the other causes are ischemic hepatitis where you can have a compromised liver blood flow and can have a very high levels of hgpt or cot more than 1000 you can also have a high levels of hgpt cot in patient with bile duct obstruction we call it as cholelithiasis so all these disorders helps you Uh, all these tests helps you in differentiating the different possibilities and that is how a hepatologist interpret so if you have a enzyme which is between 2 to 6 fold we have a common causes which we uh, which we see uh, on day to day basis but a very high levels of uh, hgpt hgot speaks of rare disorders but they are common they are rare disorder but they are usually seen and diagnosed in a hospital setup patient usually have an associated problems when we diagnose these kind of conditions so if you look at a cirrhosis of liver usually once the cirrhosis develop which is irreversible liver damage the most of the patients will present with either normal or elevated hgpt hgot hgot is more than hgpt in alcoholic liver cirrhosis but whereas in other cirrhosis it may not be it may be vice versa there is usually a elevation of alkaline phosphatase in patient with cirrhosis of liver the synthetic function if you look at in a cirrhosis of liver albumin is usually very low whereas prothrombin time is prolonged so just looking at a liver function test we can say that this patient is likely to have a cirrhosis of liver on the basis of enzymes hgot hgpt hgot alkaline phosphatase uh, total protein albumin and prothrombin as i mentioned just now there can be a normal or elevated hgpt hgot or alkaline phosphatase but there will be always in a cirrhotic patient low albumin and a high prothrombin time if you look at the liver function and can you make out the patient has a um, obstruction or not yes we can a patient who has a bile duct obstruction or a patient who has a obstruction to the biliary tree we will have a very high levels of alkaline phosphatase we will also have a very high levels of bilirubin which is probably more conjugated bilirubin you may may not have a low albumin and you will al you will always have a possibility that there may be a elevated prothrombin time so just look at the uh, parameters five parameters that yes in a patient who has a biliary obstruction the lft will show high bilirubin conjugated more than unconjugated enzymes sgbt sgot may may not be elevated alkaline phosphate is usually elevated very high and also there will be a prolongation of prothrombin time most of the cases can we diagnose a patient with uh, hepatocellular cancer on based on the liver function yeah we can we can suspect provided we we look into the details so most of the patients who have a, a liver cancer without a background of cirrhosis may may not have um, much abnormality in the liver function except elevated alkaline phosphatase bilirubin or a low albumin sometimes we need in these group of patients an additional liver test to know which is called as alpha pitoprotein 
or uh, deep uh, pro carboxyprothrombin where we can know whether the liver uh, function abnormality is because of the liver cancer or not. So, if you have elevated bilirubin, elevated alkphos and low albumin or prolonged PT, you may suspect but again you need to take the help of ultrasound, CT scan, triphasic, MRI and additional blood markers or tumor markers like alpha pitoprotein or uh, deep pro, uh, prothrombin to know basically whether the person has a liver cancer or not. Now we know there is an epidemic going on in our country obesity and it is linked to as well uh, diabetes mellitus, NASH as we call it as non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Now it is changed to metabolic associated uh, steatohepatitis. So basically it is now the nomenclatures are changing for the same disease because of the multiple etiologies for causing a liver swelling we call it as steatohepatitis. So, what is NASH? NASH exactly is the deposition of the fat, excessive fat into the liver cells called as hepatocytes because of which the liver function deteriorates and we get problems in liver synthetic function, we get problems in liver function and how do we come to know that? So, the most important marker of uh, NASH is enzyme elevation and that is SGPT. So, if you have an elevated SGPT more than two times the SGOT, then it is an important marker that patient is suffering from a steatohepatitis or a significant fatty liver disease provided the patient has no history of alcohol intake but may have associated diabetes, thyroid, dyslipidemia, obesity and so on which can cause metabolic associated liver disease we call it as NASH it's kind of NASH in the under the family of NASH. So, what do we do with the NASH? So, if you look at the five parameters which we were discussing I discuss cirrhosis, I discuss liver cancer, I discuss biliary obstruction how do you interpret based on the liver function in a patient of NASH or a fatty liver disease you may get elevated HGPT, HGOTs and gamma GT but you will not get elevation of alkaline phosphatase you may have a normal albumin you may have a normal prothrombin time and you may have a normal alkphos so uh, only enzyme elevation with normal bilirubin and albumin and prothrombin time make you suspect that yes this patient actually has a some kind of NASH provided we rule out other causes we rule out cirrhosis and all other pathology. The, pa the patients who have a indirect bilirubin high because of hemolysis or because of genetic disorder called as Gibbard syndrome or Krigerel nature these patients have usually indirect fraction more than the direct fraction but enzymes are usually normal. So, if you do SGOT, SGPT, alkaline phosphatase, total protein albumin they usually have a normal function. In a patient with Gil Gibbard syndrome it is usually a disease where you have a fluctuating bilirubin level from a normal 1, 1.2 to 6 and it gets fluctuated because of dehydration, because of painkillers or sometimes it can be because of fever. So, you will never have a patient with Gibbard syndrome where the bilirubin is crossing more than 6. If it is crossing more than 6, we consider krigler nager as a differential diagnosis rather than Gibbard syndrome. And it is a benign cause, it is a very commonly uh, found uh, problem in day to day practice. We see many patients coming to us with the dietic restriction, with uh, stopping of proteins and fat and everything and so on and then we do the test, we find that total bilirubin is high, indirect bilirubin is high, direct bilirubin is within normal range, all other parameters are normal, ultrasound abdomen when we do it is completely normal. And then we do a genetic test called as UGT1ASA which comes positive because it is a chromosomal genetic abnormality which we detect and that is how we diagnose a Gilbert syndrome. Basically, it is a diagnosis of exclusion once we rule out other causes. But it is a benign disease, it just requires to be um, monitored closely and these patients if they avoid dehydration, if they uh, avoid painkillers and uh, they cannot avoid fever but then if there is a possibility that during fever the bilirubin may go elevated but nothing to worry it will settle down again once the fever subsides. Mm -hmm. 
सो बेसिकली टोटल प्रोटीन इज डिवाइड इन टू डिफरेंट सब टाइप्स विच इज सीरम अल्बिन एंड सीरम ग्लोबलिन एंड दिस इज बेसिकली लिवर सिंथेटिक फंक्शन इट हेल्प्स इन नोइंग द लिवर सिंथेटिक फंक्शन एंड ऑल्सो इट हेल्प्स इन नोइंग द लिवर डिसीज सो इन अ पेशेंट विथ सिरोसिस ऑफ लिवर तो वी कैन नो वेदर द patient has a low albumin and total protein is also low then there is a possibility that patient may be having a cirrhosis of liver whereas if the patient has a high globulin as compared to albumin there can still be liver disease because of a different reason which we call as autoimmune etiology so patient with autoimmune liver disease or cirrhosis can have a high globulin as compared to albumin and can give an idea that the patient uh, has a liver disease because of this etiology yes uh, the patients who come with the liver uh, function uh, test requirement they should be fasting because uh, alkaline phosphatase one of the liver parameter in liver function test can get altered if the patient is not fasting for the blood test yes few patients of gibert syndrome as i mentioned those who have uh high chances when the patients are dehydrated the bilirubin may get falsely elevated or can present with jaundice so that's why we always mention that patient should have adequate hydration before giving the blood test the diseases of liver diseases of blood cell disorder diseases of the skeletal muscle all can cause in some or other form uh, abnormal liver function but to enumerate few like we have patients who have a uh, uh, alcohol as etiology can cause alcoholic liver disease whether it is a fatty liver alcoholic hepatitis alcoholic cirrhosis of liver can cause liver function abnormalities patient with infection anywhere in the body sepsis can cause liver function abnormalities patient with autoimmune etiologies can affect liver as well can cause uh, liver function abnormalities patient with diabetes or thyroid disease or lipid abnormalities like triglycerides or cholesterol elevation can cause elevated enzymes like hgbt hgot and cause a disease called as metabolic syndrome or nash and can cause liver function abnormalities patients who are on toxins or patients who are on drugs which has a, a hepatotoxic effect like methotrexate or azathioprine or many drugs which are liver toxic antibiotics and all can cause liver function abnormalities many patients who are on heart disease arrhythmia treatment like cardiron can cause liver function abnormalities patient with liver cancer can also have a liver function abnormalities patients who have a bile duct obstruction because of internet intrinsic or extrinsic cause like pancreatic cancer chronic pancreatitis bile duct stone or uh, pancreatic uh, tumors so on they also can cause a liver function abnormalities patients who have a, a liver function abnormalities the need to repeat the test is based on the diagnosis of a patient so if the patient has a gibert syndrome i would say that i would do a test for once or twice and i will do a genetic test fix his diagnosis by genetic and ultrasound and i wouldn't repeat because i know it will keep fluctuating even if i do every weekly but whereas the patient who has a cirrhosis of liver wherein we know that before establishing the diagnosis we will need a liver function test and only if the liver function deteriorates then we do either one once a month or once in two months for a follow up to know whether the synthetic function is getting deranged whether there is a prothrombin time is getting prolonged because of again synthetic disorder whether the albumin is coming down or not whether there is a raised bilirubin or not because that gives you idea about the liver function so in most of the cases where there is a cirrhosis we usually repeat them once in 1 to 3 months where the whereas the patients who are on treatment for steatohepatitis or fatty liver disease we repeat only till the liver functions are again back to normal so many a times i get patients who have a gallstone disease and uh, they come with the abdominal pain 
and uh, we start then evaluation for them. So, a patient with gallstone disease can present with the abdominal pain because of gallstone itself or can have a pain because of the gallstone slipping into the bile duct and can present with the obstructive jaundice. And uh, we do in this group of patient liver function test as I mentioned wherein you can have a high bilirubin and alkaline phosphatase and sometimes elevated enzymes that makes us diagnosis probable diagnosis and then we do ultrasound and find out whether there is a stone which has slipped into the bile duct as well gallstone in the gallbladder and that is how we diagnose that it is a gallstone which has slipped into the bile duct and that is how it can cause an abnormal liver function test. Also gallbladder stone can compress on the bile duct called as Mirizi syndrome can have a liver function abnormalities. Sometimes a gallbladder when it is inflamed and cholecystitis severe sepsis empyema of gallbladder can also cause high alkphos and bilirubin and can cause abnormal liver function test. The patients who have liver cirrhosis can be divided into two types. One is early cirrhosis and the second is advanced cirrhosis. So, the patients who are early cirrhosis can have absolutely normal liver function test and when you do a liver function test, you will find bilirubin normal, enzymes normal, alkaline phosphatase normal, protein, albumin, prothrombin time, all normal. And all this is actually, a, you can say that it can misguide you, a normal liver function does not rule out a cirrhosis of liver, but it just speaks that it may be an early cirrhosis provided you have a other parameters or other tests which are showing cirrhosis of liver. So, if you do an ultrasound which shows a a uh, liver ultrasound shows a core texture of the liver, it may show a portal vein diameter increase, it may show a spleen enlargement, it may also show the liver lobules or nodularity, it may show a flow of the liver hepatopetal. Uh, in that case, that along with the other liver function tests, if you merge it with, you may be able to tell that patient may have a cirrhosis of liver. So, a normal liver function does not rule out cirrhosis of liver, whereas in all patients of advanced cirrhosis of liver, you will have an abnormal liver function test. That is how I mean. So, if you have a patient who is diagnosed for the first time in your OPD, cirrhosis of liver, based on the ultrasound, based on the uh, endoscopic findings, it does not necessarily mean that he will have an abnormal liver function test, although uh, that is most of the time seen in 70 to 80 percent of the patient, but again, 10 to 30 percent of the patient in early cirrhosis may not have an abnormal liver function test. Whereas in advanced cirrhosis, it is vice versa, almost 90 to 95 percent of the patients with advanced cirrhosis of liver will have an abnormal liver function test. Yes, in most of the patients where the liver cancer is small in size, where the liver tissue or liver parenchyma is not much involved, we may find completely liver function, normal liver function without any abnormalities in the bilirubin, enzymes, alkaline phosphatase or protein function. So, a normal liver function does not exclude a liver cancer.